So I love stories, so I want to start with one. Uh, when I was in the third or fourth grade, one of my classmates decided that she wanted to have a pool party for her birthday. And while all the other little girls were excitedly talking about what color swimsuits they were going to wear, I was really, really concerned with one very pressing detail. What was I going to do with my hair when it got wet? Since I can remember, my hair, these curls, have complicated life for me. They've shown this lack of control. They get in the way of my desire to have everything very neat and polished and put together. They reveal this sort of this wildness. And it's always been really hard for me because it's been a daring break with traditional ideals of beauty, which for me has always been this. <laughs> That's what happens when you add heat to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> and this, by the way, is what most people in my life are used to seeing me with. This is the Andrea they know. When they find me on the street somewhere casually on the weekends and they encounter this, I hear a lot of different reactions. Everything from, oh my god, I love your curls, where have you been hiding them? To, oh, <laughs> You can fix that, right? And we laugh, but as a kid, I heard this second response more often from people, and I started to think that maybe my curls were a liability a reason for people to judge me or treat me differently. And my curls, my, my natural way of being, was sort of relegated to something that could only be shown in the most private of circles. Now, I know at some point right now, someone in this room is saying, is she for real? I mean, it's just hair. It's not that serious, right? Be grateful that you even have hair. And I am, I really am, but for so long, my hair has occupied such a big part of my identity, and I know that I'm not alone in this way. Like a lot of curly-haired women, I hide, all right, yes, I, <laughs> I hide behind my blow dryer. I use it as like a shield, it, it protects me, it keeps things smooth and safe. And I'm not so different from maybe a balding man who hides under a hat, or, or, or a petite woman who disguises herself in four-inch heels, or anyone who's ever said, I cannot leave my house today without my control top spanks on, <laughs> right? We all have these shields that we hide behind. And ultimately, the question for me became, if I ditch the shield, if I let it go, can I still feel good about myself? And I've come to the conclusion that, well, I have to. Because ultimately, life will always find a way to force you to face the truth. A few years ago, I was traveling for work, and I was in London. And I was a video producer, and I was there to interview these leadership experts on camera. And I had to get these people to trust me, to see me as polished and professional. And for a long time, let me tell you that my hair has dominated things for me. I've always had to worry about things like bad weather, <laughs> bringing in terrible humidity. And I've always had to worry about, do I have time to sit here and think about who's sitting across from me in a business meeting? Do I want them to see me as polished and professional, which is my straight hair, or creative and quirky, a little edgy. That's my curly hair. So in this setting, I had to blow dry my hair. It was very important. But I also had to travel a little light for this trip. I was a little worried about my US blow dryer starting a fire in a UK hotel, so <laughs> I left my trusty 2,000 watt blow dryer back at home. But I figured this hotel had to have a nice blow dryer. If not, arrangements could be made. So as soon as I get to the hotel, I open the windows, I see this great view, and I say, let's go look at the blow dryer. 
<laughs> and imagine my sheer dismay when I see this itty bitty little 1200 watt blow dryer that blows out nothing but a very soft, warm, insulting breeze. <laughs> oh God, I thought. But I wasn't deterred. This was still gonna happen. So I set to the task. I start blow drying my hair piece by piece by piece. 30 minutes in, it happens. The smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> and as if I had been completely asleep the entire time, I look up and see the entire room is filled with smoke. The whole room. <laughs> and I had no idea. This little blow dryer that couldn't was dying a very smoky death. <sighs> so I jumped to and I tried to pry open the windows and of course they're sealed shut. And I jump on the bed and I grab my very expensive laptop and I try fanning the heat sensors. <laughs> and that's not working. And then there's a knock at the door. <sighs> so I answer very sheepishly, looking half crazy because my hair is like out to here. And the hotel attendant says, is everything all right in your room? And I look at him like he's the crazy one for asking the question. And I'm like, yeah, of course. Why do you ask? I was mortified, so mortified. And yes, still trying to figure out what I was gonna do with my hair for the rest of the trip. You know, if you look at my photos from that trip to London, you'll see a lot of great photos with very few of me in them. A lot of photos of Big Ben, very few of Curly Andrea. I had this shame about others capturing photos of me when I just didn't look so great in my view. And you know, all of us, all of us, at one point or another, we'll lose control of that thing, that thing that we so desperately hold on to that makes us feel so safe about who we are and how we feel. And when it happens, oh, you are so raw and real to the world, bare. You would have thought my London experience would have completely broken me of my curly hair avoidance, but it didn't. There are still moments when I waver. Not so much as ever before, and that's a good thing. I've been public speaking since I was 14 years old, and today, this moment right here, is the first time I have ever dared to walk out on a stage with the lights and the mics and the cameras and the people with my fro. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It feels so good, and I am, yes, having a moment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and you know, I've come to understand that the more time I spend in my curls, the more time that petite woman wears those flats instead of heels, the more time that bald man with the two strands flapping in the wind, just lets it go, the closer we all get to being real and the closer I believe we all get to being free. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.